Good evening to the freedom-loving people of Iran, uh, both here and, and in Albania. Uh, much has been spoken at this conference uh, about the idea of regime change. Much more has been written about it in the weeks leading up. And what I'd like to do with the few moments I have available with you is take sort of the pragmatic military man approach uh, in conjunction with my good friend George here and try to answer a couple of very pertinent questions. What does regime change look like and how do you know that you will be successful? What must you do to be successful? And whether or not that change comes three months from now, a year from now, three years from now, those questions will remain the same and, and they must be addressed. In order to try to help answer those questions, I want to tell you a short story. In 1979, uh, I was a young Marine captain assigned to Camp Azure, North Carolina. And I, many new people were not born in 1979, I accept that. But nevertheless, uh, some of those of you who were remember that was the time of the rebellion against the Shah. And I watched that nightly news every night with great interest in terms of what was going to be the outcome in your country. One night in particular, a newscaster said, you've got to see this footage. Watch closely what happens here. And the film showed a squad of Iraqi, excuse me, Iranian soldiers with their rifles uh, sweeping a street of what they would have called dissidents. And at one point, one of the Iranian soldiers corners a young man in a, in a door facing, and he's beating him with the butt of his rifle. Another soldier, maybe from here to the wall, turns, looks around, and shoots him twice in the back. And the soldier in the doorway obviously falls dead. At that point, the reporter comes in and says, this may be critical. If the army is turning, the Shah cannot last. And you know, he was exactly right. He was exactly right with regard to what happened to the Shah just a few weeks later. He's right historically in terms of what happens because those men, many of them inductees, are closest to the people on the street. They are the fathers and the sons and the brothers and the sisters of the people who are dying in the street. And they are most likely to be able to turn and resist supporting the government if they're having to kill their own people. We've seen it happen that way time and again. Now, those countries represented here to include my own are also critical to the equation. We cannot do what we did in 2009, which is exhibit a lack of moral courage and an indecision and sit on our hands. Good people died in the streets in 2009, and we did nothing. I honestly think they were that close. But the lack of support from other nations in America, in Europe, in the Middle East, caused those people to feel very much alone, and in the end, they lost. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I wish for you that uh, the gods of, of freedom-loving people everywhere support your efforts. I encourage you. Your objective should be the overthrow of those ayatollahs who have created a dark period in Iranian history. Thank you very much.